right. If you found uh, doing that easy, and again, I hope that you really did take your time and try this on your own before just starting this next video. So if you found that easy, you know, go ahead and skip this video. If you found you're having troubles, um, I'll show you how to do the problem in this video. And if you're starting this video before even trying it, then push pause and try the actual problem. We have this h of x, 1 half x plus 2. And we know the limit, or we want to kind of get evidence to show that the limit of h of x as x approaches 6 is 5. So the goal is to say, if delta is some number, then x minus c in absolute value less than delta forces our output minus l less than epsilon. Now, we have a couple of different epsilons to do this with. Let's see how this works. First off, my limit here is supposed to be 5, so we're going to replace the L with a 5. My output is H of X, or I'm going to call it 1 half X plus 2. And we want our epsilon. Well, the first version, we want our epsilon to be 0.1. And now we can start rolling along. So combining like terms, we get 1 half x. Looks like minus 3 is less than 0.1. All right. This is going to be a little bit different from our last one, but not that much different. So in absolute values, we need to be less than 0.1. That means my expression on the inside needs to be between um, negative 0.1 and positive 0.1. If I add 3 to each side, what happens is um, adding, I get 2.9 here on the left, 1 half x in the middle, and then 3.1, I believe, on the right. In order to get x by itself, I need to multiply everything by 2. So if you take 2.9 times 2, you get a 5.8. 1 half x times 2 is just x. And then on the right-hand side, 3.1 times 2 is 6.2. So in order for the output to be really close to 5, the input has to be really close to 6. In fact, I would say, uh, let's just jump right into the absolute values. I would say the x minus... 6, if I subtracted 6 from all three sides, I guess I can put it, might as well put that in. If I subtracted 6 from all three sides, I would figure out that x minus 6 had to be between negative 0.2 and positive 0.2. This means if the absolute value of x minus 6 is less than 0.2, that is going to be equivalent to saying the output minus 5 is less than 0.1. So let's go back and look at what this is saying. If delta I'm saying is equal to 0.2, then x minus 6 less than delta or less than 0.2 forces my h of x to be within 0.1 of my output of 5. Now, if we go back up and change this 0.1 to 0 0.01, most things are going to carry on. So h of x minus 5 in absolute value less than 0 0.01 force one half x minus three to be less than 0.01, which means 
my one half x minus three has to be between negative 0.01 and positive 0.01, which means add three to both sides. 2.99 has to be less than one half x, has to be less than 3.01. Again, add, I added three to both sides, or all three sides, which is forcing when I multiply by two. So when I multiply 2.99 times two, I get 5.98. When I multiply one half x by two, I just get x. And when I multiply 3.01 by two, I get 6.02. If I subtract 6 from all three sides, I get 0.02, which means I wanted my absolute value of x minus 6 to be less than 0.02. And that would be equivalent to saying my output minus 5 is less than 0.01. So if I set my delta to be 0.02, then x minus 6 less than delta forces my output minus 5 to be less than 0.01. By the way, you should have noticed um, in both of these cases, or the relationship here, it looks very, very similar. And the relationship between delta and epsilon was that essentially if I had my epsilon to be a number, my delta, I could put as twice that number. So in both cases, when I had epsilon of 0.1 and when I had epsilon of 0.01, I just had to have my delta to be twice that number. All of these ones I've given you so far are linear. In the next video, we're going to take a look at nonlinear functions.